It's 5 a.m. in the morning as George Malaya sets off to go fishing for his daily catch. For 27 years, he's been fishing the reefs just off Honiara, capital of the Solomon Islands. But like fishermen around the Pacific, George has noticed the catches are no longer what they used to be. Before we catch fish here, but now fish is a bit less to come in here and we it's not like before we plenty of times we see fish coming up, but now no more so we have to go further far out. And it's further out to sea that the cause for the declining catches can be found. These days, a huge fleet of foreign industrial fishing vessels plies the Pacific, catching tuna to feed insatiable markets in Asia, Europe and the US. The Pacific is among the world's last relatively healthy fishing grounds and provides 60% of the global tuna. But the combined catches of both licensed and illegal vessels have caused a sharp decline in certain tuna species. Scientists warn that particularly stocks of big eye and yellowfin tuna are at risk of collapse in the near future. When we look at tuna stocks today, there really are far, far less tuna in the sea than there used to be. Uh, if we look at the size of the tuna populations, they're a very small fraction of the abundance that there used to be in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the fact is that if we want to have a sustainable tuna fishery that is viable over the long term, then we need to be catching less fish than we do today. The sustainable management of tuna stocks is severely hampered by the operations of pirate fishing vessels. Out in the vast Pacific Ocean, control over fishing activities and enforcement of fisheries regulations are almost totally absent. Many vessels exploit this situation and are effectively stealing fish from the Pacific. In 2006, environmental organization Greenpeace delivered clear evidence of the extent of illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing activities. Collaborating with fisheries enforcement officers from Kiribati and the Federated States of Micronesia, a number of fishing vessels were boarded and inspected. What we found uh, was that there were significant you know, discrepancies in the way in which these vessels were reporting. Your system is not reporting. What? The findings suggest to us that certainly there is a very high incidence of unregulated uh, fishing practices going on. And all of this points to the fact that the current or the existing monitoring, compliance and surveillance systems are totally ineffective. At present, the Pacific tuna fishing industry is not just unsustainable, it's also unfair. For many Pacific Island countries, tuna is the most valuable, if not the only resource they have. But in this $3 billion industry, most of the money is made outside of the region. Only around 6% of the revenue flows back to Pacific Island countries in the form of access fees from fisheries agreements. But the Solomon Islands government is one of the countries that intends to break this pattern and take control over the tuna in its own waters. To me, is I think the future of Solomon Islands as well as the Pacific region lies in its oceans and the resources in there. So through the tuna resources, I think the Pacific Island nations command respect. They also control this resource. People need to understand that this is a valuable resource. They need to be equipped to manage it well and also to, to start to realize that the portraying of Pacific Island countries as small island nations must come to an end. The government-owned fishing enterprise Soltai provides the country with tuna and much-needed employment. Its vessels mostly catch their fish by pole and line, a more selective and therefore more environmentally friendly fishing method. The country is investing to expand this fleet and increase the domestic capacity for onshore tuna processing. At the same time, the plans call to restrict the number of licenses for foreign vessels to fish in the country's territorial waters. It's a bold and ambitious approach for a country which has always depended heavily on foreign aid and fisheries access fees 
and is currently negotiating trade agreements with partners such as the European Union. I think this new policy to to uh, more and more and then completely do our own thing as our industry comes out will be making us more independent of the aid that we're getting now. Yeah? I think we, we will be putting us towards a, a, to a point where we, we achieve self-determination. But for the time being, Honiara's port is still full of foreign fishing vessels that transship their catches, taking the tuna and the profits elsewhere. A reduction of industrial fishing effort and the establishment of domestic, sustainable fishing enterprises are essential to prevent an impending tuna crisis. But there's another measure which is crucial for the future of Pacific tuna. Marine reserves are areas where all harmful uses of the ocean, including fishing, are banned. A network of large-scale reserves could help protect Pacific ecosystems and the tuna stocks. By locating marine reserves in places where species are at their most vulnerable, in areas where they aggregate, marine reserves can offer them very important protection at critical life stages. Marine reserves can also help us to regulate the impact of uh, illegal fishing by placing reserves in, in areas that are outside national jurisdiction it may be possible to give protection to these populations so that when they enter national waters they, they are going to be uh, sufficiently abundant to provide a benefit to the nations that are committed to managing them properly. Marine reserves mean fewer areas for fishing. But outside of the reserves, more and bigger fish can potentially be harvested. The Pacific is a vast and diverse area, but the measures needed to save Pacific tuna require a drastic and concerted political approach. The Pacific Island countries need to unite to take ownership of the resource that rightfully belongs to them. It is the key resource for the Pacific Islands. It is in serious trouble. If they don't do anything now, then there's going to be a very bleak future for the Pacific Islands, economic ruin and disaster for Pacific peoples. Back in Honiara, George Malaya motors a small catch back to shore. Others have given up fishing and are buying fish discards off the vessels in port. George's future and that of fishermen around the region depend on the political decisions for a fair and sustainable management of tuna in the Pacific. <laughs>